When a monochromatic light is passed through a solution containing the absorbing substance, the decrease in the intensity of light with path length is proportional to the concentration of the solution and the intensity of light. We'll understand it better. That is, if we have a cell or a cuvette which contains a solution which has absorbing substance and if I0 is the intensity of the incident light and I is the intensity of the transmitted light. I0 and I is not going to be the same if we have a solution containing absorbing substance. That is, the absorbing substance will absorb some amount of light and the transmitted light's intensity will be less than the I0. And this path length, why we call it as a path length? It is the path of the light passing through this. So it's nothing but the width of the cuvette or the cell we use. And here it's another important thing is the cuvette we use or the cell we use should be transparent to this light. It should not absorb any light. So that will not have interference in our readings. Now we'll understand this definition in a better manner. Look at this. Imagine that this path length is divided into 10 divisions. This is only for your understanding. It is actually divided into infinitesimally small divisions. That is, we are considering this di. That is, if I take one division, I have considered only one division out of this 10 divisions. If i is the intensity entering through this division, when it comes out, some amount of light is absorbed. Let it be di. Why I am taking di? Because the length here is not L. It is only dl, a small division. So the intensity of light coming out will be I minus di. This is for one small division. So we will go back to our definition. When the monochromatic light is passed through a solution containing absorbing substance, the decrease in the intensity of light we are seeing that the intensity of light is decreasing, so the minus sign. Two molar solution. In, if I assume that point triple naught one has ten absorbing molecules, point triple naught two should have twenty absorbing molecules. So the more the absorbing molecules, more will be the light absorbed, and less will be the intensity transmitted. So the decrease in the intensity is proportional to the concentration of the solution. Next is path length. We assume that the width of the cell is 1 cm and the another cell is 2 cm. In case 1 cm cell has 10 absorbing molecules, the 2 cm cell can hold 20 absorbing molecules because the light passes through one point. So the in decrease in the intensity of light is proportional to the path length also. So it is proportional to I, C and L intensity, concentration and path length. So the decrease in the intensity with path length is proportional to the concentration of the solution and intensity of light. Why I am not taking path length? Path length is here. The decrease in the intensity with path length is proportional to C and L. Once I remove the proportionality sign and replace it with equality sign, we get a proportionality constant. It can be kappa or k. In some books, they show kappa and some books k. This is nothing but a proportionality constant. Now, we have come till here. I am rearranging, getting this i to the left hand side and dl to the right hand side. So, minus di by i is equal to kc dl. Now, we are going to integrate on both the sides. Why are we integrating? This whole expression is explaining only one small division. I have taken dl and di. But we want to know what is the decrease in intensity when it moves from 0 to L. So we integrated between the limits. I is equal to I0 when path length is 0 and I is equal to I when path length is L. So we are applying the limits and integrating it. When we integrate it, we all know 1 by i, that is 1 by x is nothing but log x. In mathematics, we call it as log x, although we don't tell that it is natural logarithm. Actually, it is natural logarithm, that is base e. So, we are representing natural logarithm here as ln x, ln i instead of log i. 
ln i minus ln i and for dn it is l that is uh, integral of dx is x so it is l this is what we see ln i and we are applying the lim we are going to apply the limits i not i kc both k and c are constant and we are removing it out and l 0 to l we are applying the limits now upper limit minus lower limit ln i minus ln i not l minus 0 so i am not considering the second term so i can also write it as ln i by i not is equal to kcl and when i remove the minus sign i not goes up so it is ln i not by i is equal to kcl and now I am converting this natural logarithm to base 10. So ln to log, so it becomes 2.303 into logarithm of i0 by i is equal to kcl. And I am getting this 2.303 to the bottom and having this expression. Log i0 by i is nothing but absorbance. This can also be represented this way. Minus log i0 by i becomes log minus log i by i0 okay i'm reversing it and i by i0 is nothing but transmittance so it can also be represented as minus log transmittance this you should remember for problems a is log i0 by i or minus log t and k by 2.303 k is also a constant 2.303 is also a constant so we are replacing with a new constant that is epsilon which is called as molar extinction coefficient or molar absorption coefficient sometimes they even call it as molar absorptivity coefficient so we are getting a new expression a is equal to epsilon cl this is the mathematical statement of b lambert's law now you should understand that epsilon is a function of wavelength. What are we meaning by that? When we plot a graph with epsilon versus lambda wavelength, we get a curve this way. And the peak of this curve at the point where, at the lambda where epsilon is maximum, we consider that lambda for that studies. That is, you will understand it better this way. In case I want to analyze ferric chloride solution, we know that the wavelength should be chosen we are telling that it's a monochromatic light so the way only single wavelength should be passed so we use a filter to allow only 480 nanometers how are we choosing that 480 nanometers is mainly by this curve that is only at 480 nanometer the epsilon is going to be maximum so we choose the lambda this way okay so epsilon is a function of wavelength there are some limitations for this law in we know that absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration and we get a graph when we plot it this way. But absorbance is linearly proportional to the concentration up to a particular limit. But at a higher concentration we see that this is just for understanding I have put this linearity. At higher concentration the curve is slightly changing this way. That is it is becoming non-linear. So this law is suitable first for monochromatic light. Next it is not suitable for higher concentration because there is a deviation in epsilon value at higher concentration. And why this non-linearity? Actually there are many reasons. I am giving you few reasons. Scattering of light. If you have some particulate matter in the solution, you will have scattering of light and that will also lead to non-linearity. And if the sample is fluorescent or phosphorescent, it will also lead to non-linearity. And if you have some stray light, some unwanted light, then also you will have non-linearity. So you should take care of all these things in order to use this law. So that the law, until it is linear only, we can apply this law. Once the non-linearity is attained, at that concentration, we are not supposed to apply this law. We will see how very small application of B. Lambert's law. That is to determine the unknown concentration of a known solution. Why I am telling known solution? I should know what I am going to analyze. If I want to analyze ferric chloride, I will fix the lambda at 480 nanometers. A totally an unknown solution I cannot take. Once I know what I am going to analyze, if someone gives a sample for us to analyze that particular concentration, we don't know the concentration. They are asking you how much of ferric ions are present in this particular sample of water. Then it is an unknown concentration to us. All we have to do is, we all know 
absorbance is equal to epsilon Cf. We prepare a known concentration. No, K is for known and U is for unknown. We are going to prepare a known concentration. Place in the cuvette. Because I know it's ferric ions, I'll fix the lambda at 480 nanometer and I will note down the absorbance value. Next, I remove the cuvette, same cuvette. I rinse it with the unknown solution and place the unknown concentration which is given to us for analysis and then note down the absorbance value. So we know AK, AU and CK because C is the known concentration we have prepared and this is the unknown concentration. Now we are replacing the proportionality sign. Why I am using the proportionality sign? Because epsilon and L are constant. Epsilon is constant already we know. L is also a constant because I am using the same cell and it's the width of the cuvette or the cell. So if I use the same cell, L is going to remain as a constant. So it is just proportional to the concentration. I remove the proportionality sign and replace it with the equality sign by using these two equations Cu by Ck. Cu is proportional to Au and Ck is proportional to Ak. And we are going to determine the unknown concentration 